Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, we will see a pediatric cataract surgery. The patient is a 7 years old girl with this kind of cataract in both eyes. Genular cataract or developmental cataract, whatever you say, a disc like opacity at the center. So, I have started the surgery. This is the incision on the uh, you can say just behind the limbus. The side ports are also like that. Includes a bit of sclera. These incisions are self sealing and even in pediatric cataracts it does not require any suture. But if at any point of time, if I feel that this surgery needs a suture for nice closure of the wound, I will put that suture. But my experience is if we go just uh, posterior to limbus and include a bit of sclera, even a 3.2 millimeter wound does not require any suture. So, incisions are made and now the intercapsule is stained with tripan blue dye. It is said that this tripan blue dye changes the texture of the anterior capsule and capsulorexis becomes easier in pediatric cataracts, but it is not easy. The Rexis tends to go to periphery at all time and I will show you my technique how I do Rexis in pediatric cataracts by small jerky pulls. The antechamber is nicely filled up, you can say over filled with visco and now I take the uterate, uh, now I take the needle first. In pediatric cataracts it is difficult to pierce the capsule. So, I needle, a sharp needle is taken and the needle goes through any wound and you can just pierce the center of the capsule and raise a capsular tag. And now I go with the uterata forceps. At this time also you can inject some more visco. I go with uterata forceps. The tag tends to go to periphery immediately, but we have to control it by this small jar cables. At this time, I find that it is going to periphery, so I inject visco. Still, it is manageable. It has not gone to far periphery. And here I so and these are the small jerky pulls to do what I want to do. If I just be normal uh, pull, it can go to periphery, but small jerky pulls can control the uh, uh, no, path better. Now, I do hydrodissection. I see that the uh, hydrodissection cannula can pierce the white thing easily. So, I know that this will not require any phaco handpiece. So, I just remove the uh, cataractus part with Simco. And now, I try to remove the cortex with Simco, but it does not come out easily. So, I inject visco and take the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Uh, I am using about 350 vacuum and 35 floret and even with this much vacuum it is I am finding it difficult to get it. There is lot of resistance. The cortex does not want to come, but it is coming. This is real time surgery. And now what I am doing is uh, with the irrigation probe, I irrigated the equator of the back and now the cortex is coming easily. So, done and now I change hands, irrigation is on the left and aspiration on the right now and the cortex from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock comes easily. So, cortical cleanup is done and now is the main step of the surgery. All, all steps are tricky, all steps are main steps, but this is the most important step in pediatric cataract surgery, doing a PCCC, posterior continuous curvilinear capsular axis. That is uh, rexis on the posterior capsule and the caps, this rexis should be smaller than the anterior capsule and it should be central. So, I take this cystitome, make a puncture at the center, raise a tag and now I take the uterata forceps 
I go hold this tag and I rotate it and this tag also tends to go to periphery. But I could control it and I could do a nice posterior axis, central and smaller than the anterior axis. And now this is 2 percent HPMC, filling up the anterior chamber, filling up the gap between two capsules and now enlarging the main wound to about 3.1 millimeter. I am using a cartridge which go, should go easily in the wound. This is okay, about lens selection. The lens is a sensor multi-piece intraocular lens and in, in lens selection my guide is Dr. Lob Kuchka away from Kolkata. He is a very renowned pediatric ophthalmologist. Uh, the emetropic power of this child is 28 diopter and we, we targeted a bit of hypermetropia and with Dr. Lobb's guidance we have selected 26 diopter. Emetropic power is 28, we have targeted hypermetropia and we are putting 26 diopter which the child will be hypermetrop by uh, about 1.25 diopter. And now uh, the lens is to be placed. The lens has been loaded in the cartridge by this time and my plan is to place the lens in the, uh, not in the bag, first I am placing the haptic on the iris, over the iris that is in the anterior chamber. because. Suddenly, the haptic can go into vitreous and it can tear off the uh, capsule, posterior capsule and a lot of problems can happen. So, it is better to place it over the iris and then pull it and place it in the capsular bag. Place it in the bag, but it does not go in the bag, it went into the sulcus. So, I am pulling it again from the sulcus and now it is it has gone in the back. How I understand? There is a kink in the anterior capsule at 7 o'clock and by that I could make out that it has gone in the back. Inject some more visco and now my plan is to place the trailing haptic in the bag at on go, but it does not go. So, I placed it over the iris and now I go through the right side port, take a Sinsky hook and try to place it in the back, but it does not go. It goes over the iris, dial the lens, place the haptic at 7 o'clock and try to pull it and this time I could. I could place the haptic in the back, but I have to be sure whether the lens is in the back or not. How to do that? So, I take some visco, inject the visco in the anterior chamber and the pupil dilates and we can see the rexus margin clearly. Now, I take a Sinsky hook and if I can hook this, yes I can hook it. If I can hook the anterior rex, anterior capsule at the haptic optic junction, that means the haptic is in the bag. Yes, the lens is in the bag and perfectly centered. The posterior axis is central and smaller than the anterior one. And now, I am dialing the lens placing the haptics at 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock because I want to go through the side ports in the anterior vitreous and remove all the visco that went into the anterior vitreous and do a bit of anterior vitrectomy so that I can remove the scaffold over which epithelial cells, lens epithelial cells can grow and uh, elsnic pearl formation can be prevented. 
So, here it is I am going into the anterior vitreous, this is a good new cutter and it is cutting well, it is removing the viscoelastic substance that went there as well as it is cut, cutting the uh, uh, anterior vitreous. Irrigation is over the lens and cutting is being done. Here we complete removing the viscoelastic substance. Now some more cutting for removing the anterior vitreous face and removing the scaffold, vitreous scaffold over which lens epithelial cells may grow. And now, as I come out, the anterior chamber will be flat. So, I keep an air bubble ready before I come out. And I do this simultaneously, come out and inject the air bubble, so that the anterior chamber is not flat, the vitreous does not come anteriorly. And this practice is good, whether you do uh, during bimanual irrigation aspiration of the cortex in beginner's hands, we do complete irrigation aspiration. You will see that all the uh, fluid is coming out and the anterior chamber is becoming flat. At that time, you can keep the AC formed by air and then you get time to hydrate the side ports. So, that is what I am doing here, hydrating the side ports and closing the side ports. And now, to check whether the vitreous strands are there in the antivitreous and in the antechamber or not, this is a bit of Kennecott. And I aspirate and I find that there is no vitreous strand in the anterior chamber. If it were there, it would stain with Kennecott. Kennecott particles would stain, stick to the or cling to the vitreous strands and we could appreciate the vitreous strands. It is not there, clean, nice. And now I am forming the anterior chamber. At this time, the Simcoe is in the anterior chamber, the irrigation area. Now the irrigation is in the tunnel, the sclerocorneal tunnel. And now I keep it here for some 10 seconds. And then I come out. And now I check if it is leaking or not. I find that it is not leaking. The cornea is taut. There is no wrinkling on the cornea. And I feel the pressure. And this is OK. And this is a bit of moxie. Inject just a bit of moxie in the anterior chamber. And feel the pressure. It's fine and our surgery is done. So, in this surgery, we have seen lot of things. So, keep these things in mind and do a very good pediatric cataract surgery. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in your pediatric cataract surgery.